Hello, my name is Alex Askarov and I'm in with part, a small part of my Sewerlock collection and today we're going to talk about James Edward Allen Gibbs. He was the famous Wilcox and Gibbs and possibly made the best selling chain stitch sewing machine of all time. Now he was a Shenandoah farmer, he was born in 1829 and he was from Roxbridge County in Virginia and one day he's just reading a paper and he comes across a woodcut drawing of a Grover and Baker sewing machine and what, um, I'm just building a little castle to put the same, the Wilcox and Gibbs on. And what he uh, decides to do, which is how his mind was working, um, is to build a sewing machine. What made him do that? So he goes home and he gets all his chisels and pen knives and saws out and he makes a big wooden block sewing machine. However, there is a slight flaw. The woodcut only shows the bottom half of the sewing machine. It does not show the top half. So, sorry, completely the wrong way around. It shows the top half, it doesn't show the bottom half. So he has to make up the underneath. He has to figure out how it works underneath. And what he does is he makes a, a little revolving hook. He doesn't realise that he has invented something unique, something that's patentable. So off he goes, uh, showing his machine. And one day in 1856, James comes across a first Isaac Singer sewing machine and he's got a chance to examine it. And he sees uh, underneath that there's a shuttle going along. He hasn't got a shuttle on his machine and he realises he's got something brilliant. So he quickly goes back and makes a smaller metal machine. It doesn't look like this yet. Um, and he then patents it. Patents it. Patents it? You know what I mean. So he patents it and for the first time in history we have the, the chain stitch, the double elastic chain stitch. In 1857 he meets uh, a chap called James Wilcox. Now it's quite by accident that he meets him and actually he, he was in Philadelphia um, and he was in the offices of a chap called Emery Horton. When he was there in walks James Wilcox. Now I could just get this close up. That, um, so in walks James Wilcox and um, they hit it off straight away. And he's got a machine and Wilcox has got the money so they go into a partnership and they make this fantastic sewing machine. Now a year later in 1857, he's redesigning all the time and he makes this superb, I'm just gonna see if you can just catch it. But this is the first beautiful sewing machine that he makes and he makes it, he can make it any shape he wants. He decides to make it in a letter G after Gibbs. How brilliant is that? So so this, if you hold it up to the light, to the back side, you see the basic frame, long before they had the hand wheel and everything, was just in a letter G, that which I think is just sheer genius. I'm going to take some pictures in a minute. But so there you go, one of the greatest sewing machines in history, invented in such a way. And um, James died in 1902, and he was one of the the first and one of the longest lived pioneers. He had gone through the whole of the American Civil War. He had become absolutely uh, amazingly wealthy. They, they, this is only a legend. They say that he named his farm Raffin from the Greek, well, this is all a bit nerdy, Raffis, to sow. And that became, so he became so popular and so famous in his area that the whole community then became Raffin County. Now I don't know if that's true or not, but anyway I'm going to take some great pictures, I'm going to shut up now and show you this beautiful beautiful piece of engineering and one of the true great machines made by the great pioneers. This is still Victorian, this was made in 1901 so this is the very last, as Queen Victoria was breathing her last breath this machine was being made. So it's a genuine Victorian machine and this is just part of, of my collection and, and I'll show you a few of those um, at a later date. Well bye for now.